It's really wet out there. Hey froggies, how are we doing today? I don't know if you live in the Midwest or not, but if you do, you know we've been having a ton of crazy rain. And because of that, I really wanted to showcase with a very wet, kind of rapidy waterfall style dirty pour. Now, I've done dirty pours in the past where you use solid colors and then use our pour cups to intermingle them. This pour style is gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna use a base of our Cambridge blue, super pretty and then highlight it with our Brie Rees Lake and our Blanco Blanco White to kind of give it a really turbulent kind of ocean crest wave waterfall kind of effect with the water. That way we just kind of really capture the, the water essence. Now, this particular style, you do have a little bit higher of a rate of failure because you're using such heavy concentrations of inks, but you're not dispersing it evenly. So gotta be mindful that if you add too much ink, you will run into issues where it just doesn't cure. Because the alcohol ink itself isn't something that cures, it's the resin. So if you oversaturate it, you'll run into that issue. So it's something to be mindful of as you're practicing this technique. I highly recommend doing some simple blank tests to get a feel for your resin and how it's gonna disperse the alcohol ink. But we'll go over the basics today and I'll show you how to make some really pretty liquid waterfall style dice. Let's get casting. All right. You know, while I was getting set up for everything, I definitely wanted to enhance these blues, so I grabbed a couple others. I got a pastel purple and then the monsoon ranger. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the sparkles to the side, so that way the mica powder gives us all the sparkle we need. I'm gonna be using a three chamber cup for this process, so that way we can make sure that our pour gets nice and messy. And you can see this blue is just beautiful. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and mix together our part A and part B. Let's see, it's cleared up, but we still have a couple little wisps in here. Remember, your resins like to stick to the side of the cup, so it's always important to make sure you're scraping your cup sides and the base. Gotta go ahead and add our colorant. I want this to be a nice solid color, so we're gonna go on the heavier side. So this is about twice as much mica as I would typically use. Typically, I would recommend transferring to a new cup, but with this particular resin, I found that it's not necessary. Since I'm gonna be using our split chamber cups after I get our base color set, we'll be good to go. Just look at that nice silvery blue. I absolutely love it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pour this. One thing I am making sure to do here is I want there to be unevenness with my pour. I'm gonna start with the pure alcohol inks because these are the lightest. So I'm gonna do a couple of drops there. A couple drops here. And then let it kind of combine in our cups. And then I'm gonna pour onto the face of the dice mold, just like so. That way it all kind of pours into itself. And you see you get all this beautiful striation. Then I'm gonna come back with my cup Gonna pour a bit more into my. I'm gonna come back with my cup, add more resin to my cup, add a couple more drops of my colorants. Okay. 
Make sure, give it a swoosh to make sure it's nice and mixed up. And then we're gonna follow through just to give it one more good pour. And then it's all set to go. Now with this resin, because it is nice and thin, the first thing I wanna do is make sure that I'm giving it time to swell. We've got leftover resin here. We don't want that to go to waste. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a secondary mold. Okay, so first things first. Gonna go ahead and hit this with the flame to make sure we pop any bubbles. Oh well, yeah, you can just see those kind of explode and the alcohol ink from underneath come up. Gotta go ahead and cap this guy off. And transfer that to my insert. Gonna grab my second mold here. This has had time to dwell and sink. So now we're just gonna do the same thing, pour right onto the surface. That way we get all that nice striation and color mixing. Look at that, look at how beautiful that is. I love it. These dice are awesome. Just take a look at all the beautiful swirls and that color mixing. We got some of that purple in there, some of the white, some of the lighter blue. I am in love with these. It's really awesome to see that marbled effect to pull off and really get that really natural, watery, kind of ethereal feel. If you're looking to do this effect with different colors, you 100% can do, whether it be red, green, or any spectrum of the rainbow. It looks awesome. I usually recommend doing an opaque background so that way your alcohol inks really pop, but don't let me limit your creativity. That's what the whole hobby is about. Now, big shout out to this week's winner, Luna, congratulations. We're gonna go ahead and get you a free dice mold. So go ahead and hit me up here on YouTube or shoot me an email through our official email chain. That way we can get that out to you. If you have any questions or ideas for what to do next time, definitely let me know in the comments and we're gonna be picking another winner. This time, go ahead and let me know what colors you'd like to see mixed for this specialized technique of Dirty Four. Thanks and happy casting.